What's up everybody, it's Izzy, and in this video we're going to talk about a strange phenomenon that exists in powerlifting called Poverty Bench. Now, in my opinion, Poverty Bench exists for a lot of reasons, but first let me talk to you about why I think I'm qualified to give you some tips. My best bench when I was a 67.5 kilo lifter, so that's 148 pounds, was 110 kilos or 242 in competition. When I was a 75 kilo lifter, that's 165 pounds, my best bench was 125 or 275 pounds. This is a video of me hitting 165 or 365, granted touch and go, at a body weight closer to like 87, 88 kilos or, you know, the mid 190s. That's about what I'm waking up at nowadays. So let's talk about poverty bench, right? People who have poverty benches. Why? Why does this happen? Well, there's some things that you guys just can't control, right? If, if you're one of those people with ape arms, like you lock out just above your knees, like two inches above your knees, even on a conventional deadlift, your bench is always going to be a struggle. But for a lot of you guys, the main reasons why you have a poverty bench come down to, in my opinion, number one, most important thing is impatience. Second is programming that is too hyper-specific at too early of a stage in your development. And the third is that you're underweight. And they all kind of tie together. So let me, first of all, explain what I'm talking about when it comes to hyper-specific powerlifting training. Hyper specific powerlifting training, and I'm totally guilty of this myself, I was for a really long time, and even prescribing it to other people, is basically not doing much else for your upper body besides benching. And if you use a wide grip with a big arch, let's face it guys, some of you guys are doing partials when you bench. And we, we know for a fact that a deep stretch is very important for hypertrophy. So powerlifting style bench pressing is, in my opinion, and I don't think this is very controversial, not the best way to build massive pecs, massive triceps, massive shoulders. The range of motion is short, and it's just not the best way to do it. When you combine that with the fact that people sometimes do inadequate volume with an inadequate range of motion, what ends up happening is that they're severely lacking in overall upper body development. This is something that you don't see amongst bodybuilders, right? Or even the bro lifters that people like to make fun of. Most of those guys who work on nothing but being jacked have decent benches because they are jacked. And that's the thing, is that unlike, say, the the squat, which everybody has to do in a full range of motion, and is a great muscle builder for the legs, perhaps the best muscle builder for the legs for most raw natural lifters, a partial range of motion bench is not that great. So here you are with people who are not getting a great hypertrophic stimulus from their main upper body movement, and they don't do anything else. So now the second thing, or the last third thing actually, is that people are underweight. And I get this. People are in the short term thinking that they should squeeze themselves into lighter weight classes than what is optimal for their height because in the short term, it's way better for their wilks. It's way better for their competitiveness at the state level, but perhaps it leaves them a little bit short on the national level. And this is something that people really have to think about. Yes, moving up a weight class is scary because every time they move up a weight class, the numbers to be competitive are insane. But again, if you if you are underweight for your weight class, and that's pretty easy to tell because you'll be one of the taller people in your weight in your weight class when it comes to national level competitors, you're not gonna have a good bench press because you're just not going to have a lot of upper body mass. And again, this comes down to impatience. You don't want to be less impressive on Instagram, on YouTube, or on whatever social media because it'll, in the short term, decrease your Wilkes. But in the long term, if you want to be truly competitive at the national level and higher, you cannot be underweight. And these two things that I just said go hand in hand, right? If you're doing nothing but bench, hyper-specific upper body programming with basically nothing but powerlifting style benching, and you're underweight, you're just not gonna have enough muscle mass to be an impressive bench presser. And in my experience, this is the number one cause of poverty bench. And they're both just come down to impatience, right? When you're a natural raw lifter, it takes a long time to build muscle, particularly in the upper body, especially if you're not genetically gifted. And when you're not properly bulking in order to gain weight and move up to the proper weight class for your height to fill out your leverages, you're, and you're doing nothing but partial, partial bench presses with a wide grip and a big arch, you're not building very much muscle. 
And this is the problem. So if you want to fix your poverty bench press, you need to figure out a way to gain weight and build upper body muscle. So if you really, really like hyper-specific bench programming, that's fine, but you're just going to need to bench really, really often. And I'm, I'm serious, like five, six, seven days a week with those wide grip, partial tight bench presses because that's what you have to do in order to make up for the fact that you're you have to repeat the stimulus a lot to make up for the fact that the hypertrophic stimulus from that movement isn't that great. You need to do a fuckload more volume than someone who uses a more flat back style technique with a moderate grip. Now, the second and probably most important thing in all of this is if you're not going to bench press incredibly frequently, then you need to do hypertrophy work you need to do accessories in my opinion things like flat back bench press things like dumbbell bench presses things like close grip bench presses things like incline you need variety to build your general strength base and get some hypertrophy you need to get bigger to fix poverty bench press so don't be afraid to gain weight don't be that guy who's 5'7 170 meters tall trying to squeeze his way into the 66 kilo 145 pound weight class for the rest of your career gain weight build some muscle, look like you lift, and that's what's going to help you fix poverty bench. Is it going to happen overnight? Can you just gain 30 pounds in six months and as a natural expect most of that to be muscle? No, it's a slow process, but you still have to bulk. You still have to gain weight and move up to the appropriate class for your height. And in the long run, that is really the only way, in my opinion, that you're going to fix poverty bench. Yes, take care of your technique. Yes, make sure your program doesn't suck. Those can be reasons too. If you have long arms, sorry, but the advice still applies. Gain weight, get bigger, and be patient. Building muscle as a natural takes a really fucking long time. But anyways, guys, that's my opinion on poverty bench press. Go out and fix it if you have one. No excuses. And anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, my friends, have a nice day. Good luck with your training. Peace.